well, welcome everyone um, to the uh, uh, webinar tonight. So, uh, and good afternoon, everyone in UK. We shall wait for a few more moments before the um, um, webinar starts. Can we see how many uh, people have actually joined in? Yeah, I can see there's 11 attendees here now. Oh, 15 now, I can see that now. <laughs> okay. 15 including us, including us, yeah. I see, Victor, KK Learn, Joseph, Andy Kong. Oh, go to question panel. There's a question also. Wow, there's already questions for you, Holly. Oh, wow. Okay, I'm just trying to see where I can see those. Is that in the chat? Yeah, on yeah. the right hand side, um, where you've got the toolbar, there's one section called questions. If you click on, there's a square with like a kind of line through it diagonally. If you click on that, it will pop out the chat bar um, mm -hmm. and then you can see everything. I've got webcam audio attendees and chat, so I don't have questions at this stage, but ah. you can tell me what they That's are. okay. If there's any questions anyway at question time, I can see them, so I can always field them across. So, Olivia, can we uh, show the um, share the screen? Any anything? We yeah, can... I'll uh, I'll um I'll let Holly do that one. Uh, I'll just make Holly. I'll just make you. Um... Otherwise, just show. I I prepare. I got you change slightly. Uh, of hers, so uh, to show to to nice topic, you know, yeah, just just to show it on the um, uh, on the desktop. Um, can I show that? Let me see, uh, Tom. I'll. Uh, you should you should um, as an organizer, Tom. You should have permissions to share your. Okay, real presenter. Sorry, everyone. I can't see. Oh, we can we we can perhaps do a pooling. Yeah, this is such a, a good feature. Say, uh, say, is there anyone uh, already got um, the CITP here? Uh, I don't see the share screen uh, feature. Where, where can we click? Where can I? Oh, sharing, the I first one. I make you a presenter now, Tom. Okay, okay cool. Have a go so, again now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can everyone see my uh, okay. screen? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 I can see that. Okay, cool. So uh, later on, uh, uh, Olivia, you can change to yours. Okay, it's just uh, a, a starting point. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. So for people who who are already here, you may um, um, talk about where you're from. So tonight is um, webinar uh, organized by uh, BCS Hong Kong Sessions. I'm Tom Chung, the Vice uh, Chairman of BCS Hong Kong, and we have uh, Peter Choi, our Chairman of BCS Hong Kong. Yeah, we are very honored to have um, uh, Hoy Potter and, um, uh, and Olivia from uh, Swindon with us. Yeah. And let's see the chat room. Oh, okay. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I can see those questions. 
have, have answers already. The more people are joining, I can see Marie, Marine is, has joined as well. So uh, good evening again uh, to Hong Kong uh, uh, audience and also a good afternoon to audience in the uh, UK. So um, welcome to the um, webinar tonight organized by BCS Hong Kong Sessions. Um, let me pass the um, microphone to uh, Peter Choi, the chairman of Hong Kong uh, Sessions. Uh, Peter, please. Okay, good. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, you can hear me, right? Uh, I'm Peter Choi, uh, the chairman of BCS Hong Kong Section. For uh, non-members here, so uh, BCS actually stands for the British Computer Society. So um, as uh, most of us actually know that UK has become a very popular and hot topic here in Hong Kong lately, especially in the past two weeks. And a lot of uh, industry practitioners actually are seeking to research on how to do some reciprocal qualification or certification between Hong Kong and UK. So here we have uh, BCS, which is uh, very prestigious and um, uh, with a long history IT professional organization there in UK. And uh, luckily, uh, uh, and very uh, with pleasure, I am the current chairman of the Hong Kong section. And tonight, uh, we have the honor to invite Ms. Holly Porter from the uh, headquarters, BCS headquarters, and also Olivia as well, to talk about the uh, our membership and also the charter system of the BCS. So uh, with regard to this membership and charter affairs, I think uh, uh, there is no better person than Holly. She, is, uh, she has the highest authority over this matter. So without further ado, I'll pass uh, back the microphone to Tom and uh, uh, Holly and Olivia, you have uh, the floor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Peter. Um, let's start with uh, Olivia uh, for the introduction of uh, BCS. Well, let me just make Holly the presenter and then she can um, present her slide. She's just going to kick off with a quick introduction um, and then I'm going to cover a few points on membership and then hand back over to Holly uh, who will cover the, um, the standards and Sophia. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, hopefully you can see my screen um, here. Can you see it? Okay. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, warm welcome to everybody. Um, good evening. And um, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to talk to you this evening. Um, it's really brilliant to um, speak to such an active section of our membership, which is Hong Kong, uh, which is enjoying such positive growth as well and a really rich program of events. So. Thank you for squeezing us in. Um, it's been a really difficult few months for everybody with the global pandemic. That's an understatement. Um, and so I think having the opportunity to connect virtually and to um, meet colleagues um, is really good for our professional well-being, but also our per personal well-being too. So um, I think this is an important forum tonight. And um, tonight, what we're going to do is talk about um, membership and also the professional standards that BCS offers and to give you a, a, a better bit of a flavour for the overview of that and also the SOFIA framework. Um, so I'm going to do um, a 
quick introduction to BCS, but before I do, I just wanted to introduce Olivia, who Olivia Wolfhart is in my team. So she is our membership engagement manager. Um, and I'm membership um, director. I've been at the British Computer Society now for just over one year. Um, and my mission really is to um, grow our membership and to increase the value within membership and also the engagement levels with our, our, mem our members. Um, so I have a small team focusing on this that covers also our community, which is our international sections, our specialist groups that some of you may have come across, um, and also our regional branches. And then also a team that looks at individual um, members and also corporate um, clients as well. So um, if I can just go to my screen. So if I have a... I can't see my slides at the moment, Olivia. Apologies, I probably do. I can see them. Um, it's just on the introduction to BCS membership and standards front cover. Okay. Um, that's great. If we um, if we go to the first slide, could would you mind? Um, I can't see. I can only see the the video on my screen at the moment. Apologies. Let me. Perhaps let me take over for um, presenting. Great. And perhaps I could do that. Did that work? Can everyone see that? Brilliant. Thank you. Yeah. So second slide. There you go. We go to the first slide. So just um, an introduction, introduction to BCS first. Um, so at BCS, our mission really is to um, ensure that everybody's um, experience with technology is, is positive. We've been around since 1957 and we have a Royal Charter. We have around 60,000 members in 150 different countries. Um, and this includes, the, as well as our members, we have a much wider group of stakeholders, um, which is community business leaders, academics and also policy formers. Um, and as a charity with our Royal Charter, our agenda is to lead the industry through its ethical challenges and to support people who work in the industry. We have a vision for the profession and also a thriving society. And then um, from a membership perspective as well, adding real value to the individual. Next slide, please. There you go. So the way that um, we organise our work on different focal points, so the big piece is around being a career partner, so supporting people who are thinking about a career in IT or technology, who are entering the profession and then right the way through their professional development. Um, so we have a programme that focuses on this, professional registrations are an example of that that I'll share shortly. Um, it's really important for us also that our members um, who are learned, learned and who have their own expertise in their own fields um, have, a have a chance to network and to share their expertise. Um, and so we facilitate different groups and branches. This is an example. And we also um, promote thought leadership through series of reports. We have a big focus on education. So um, we have a team who looks at um, computer science degrees and also the criteria around computer science education and what should be part of the curriculum. So that um, we're starting right at the early years and we're forming the right skills as people take those, um, those qualifications in school and come out through the industry. So um, partnerships here is a really important focus for us. And then we have a team looking at policy. So this has been very active over the past few months. We've, we've supported the government in assessing the contact tracing app, um, thinking about what local networks of supporting professionals could look like. So we have a team that works very much behind the scenes looking at policy and influencing our practice. And then the final point is around driving professional standards. We have the SPHERE framework, um, for which is the framework for IT professionals and we look at um, promoting an agenda of professionalism in the industry through our registrations and standards. Next slide please. There you go. 
I'll hand over to you to talk about membership. Yes, brilliant, thank you. Um, so I'm just really going to talk about um, what it means to be a BCS member and then cover some of the benefits of BCS membership. So thinking about what it really means to be a BCS member, it's obviously about um, professionalism, it's about being an IT professional and upholding certain standards of practice and valuing your own uh, career development as well as an individual. But I think the key thing about BCS is that you're doing it within a community of your fellow IT professionals um, especially now you know because geographic boundaries have become more blurred than ever everything's going on online now and it's much more uh, easy to network more widely and I think all of us um, during this time have kind of attended things that we probably never would have been able to attend if we'd have had to travel there and um, this session included so um, yeah it's about being part of a, a much wider community of professionals and then also, you know, being involved with BCS is about sharing the BCS vision, the BCS values and supporting us as we continue to aim to make IT good for society. So it's about giving back and contributing as well back to the profession and also to society as a whole. And so speaking of your sort of professional journey obviously depending on whereabouts you are in your career and what kind of um, sector you're in within the industry you might be looking for um, different things at different times and we want to be able to support you at whatever point you are within your professional journey so if we look here we've got obviously um, firstly things to help you develop your skills and employability so we've got a lot of e-learning um, specifically within our platform called Springboard which you can access through my BCS uh, that also has a tool that enables you to check your CV called CV360 that will give you some um, top feedback on uh, the content and the layout of your CV as well and then about growing as a professional, obviously we'll go into a lot more detail about the, um, the chartered status and other sort of standards and registrations, um, so that will follow in a little bit. Uh, obviously, you can access the latest thinking through um, the IT Now uh, magazine and publication that you're probably all familiar with. But then we've also got a lot of other content, uh, webinars like this, also um, journals, reports, policy work that you can access through our content hub. Um, and then connections are obviously really important with BCS. So we've got the branches, as you know, the specialist groups, the sections, um, and especially now loads of online events that are happening um, that you can kind of get involved with and learn from. Uh, and then the final point here about raising your profile. So of course the post nominals come with your BCS membership, but there's loads of other ways you can get involved as well. You can volunteer to speak at different events, um, get involved as a BCS mentor, which I'll mention in a little bit as well. And so here you can just see the outline of the different grades of membership from affiliate, which is really anyone who's just interested in IT or computing. Um, so no need to work in the industry or anything like that. Anyone can join as an affiliate all the way through to um, fellow, which is um, the most sort of um, experienced professional uh, with the FBCS post nominals. And then in between, we've obviously got students who are studying on any computing course or um, apprenticeship. And then we've got associate, which is a sort of early in your career, you know, working towards your first couple of years of work experience. Um, and then the professional member with at least five years work experience in the industry. And so one of the key and really sort of unique things about BCS is our code of conduct. So that really defines the values we share um, as professional practitioners who take really seriously the responsibility of the computing profession. So we know that um, there's an increasing influence that IT professionals have on our society now. So much of our communication takes place digitally. We're working digitally. We get our news, our entertainment entertainment through digital methods and so we want to make sure that all these services are designed and created in a really responsible way. So the BCS code of conduct is the unique and really powerful kind of tool to demonstrate your integrity and upholding the, um, the kind of ethical side of the IT profession. So all members will sign up to the code of conduct when you join BCS 
and that's a kind of demonstration that you accept your professional duty and your commitment to working within the public interest. So the code of conduct is really the foundation um, for all of our members to build on every day with their competency and, and their expertise. Because BCS members are really great ambassadors for the IT industry and you can use your voice to help promote the, the profession in a really positive way to society. And then finally, really, this is just a slide that shows you some of the key um, benefits from BCS membership. Most of the benefits you can access through um, My BCS. And if you're not familiar with that portal, you just um, need to go to bcs.org homepage. And on the right hand side, you'll see a small green person. If you click there, you'll be able to access the My BCS portal. And maybe if you haven't logged in for a while, um, you can check that out and kind of refresh your memory of everything that's in there. And so obviously we've got the post nominals and they're very important for a lot of people. We've got the Springboard Career Centre, which I've mentioned already, Code of Conduct, Mentoring Network, which we're actually doing quite a bit of work on at the moment. And we'll hope to be relaunching that um, in a couple of months. So keep an eye out for that to be uh, refreshed. Um, and then Sophia, which Holly will speak about, and the PDP, a place for you to log your personal development. And then in the middle here, you can see um, the networking and events, the branches and specialist groups. And then we also have a, a couple of kind of um, benefits to do with your personal um, professional life. So we've got the legal helpline um, and we've also got discounted training and insurance for IT professionals. And then finally, at the bottom, as I've already mentioned, the publishing and the thought leadership, which you can find in the content hub. And then on the right hand side, that just touches on some of our professional standards, charter professional status, registered IT technician, Fed IP and CNG. But I think Holly, I'll hand it back to you now and to go through those standards in a bit more detail. Great. Thank you. If we go to the next slide, um, yeah. the next slide um, shows all of the registrations that we have um, and we have been a bit, bit presumptuous because we've put six on there so we've put EngTech and we're hoping to get the license from the Engineering Council confirmed in October to be able to offer EngTech although is, that isn't available now so this is almost like a sneak preview um, but all of the standards that BCS offers are award that, that we award are aligned to the SOFIA Plus framework and these are really an independent independent endorsement of skills competence and professionalism and this is the difference between a standard and a qualification because a lot of qualifications are knowledge-based whereas the standards and registrations um, um, they, they look for evidence of your competence as well and your professionalism so that's the distinction to make both are important of course um, but we see very much B BCS membership as a gateway into being able to take these professional registrations um, employers use them to demonstrate their staff have the capability and also the integrity through having signed up to the code of conduct. Um, individuals commit to ma maintaining their personal development when they do a standards. Um, and so the ones that we have are, um, if we're starting at the early career stage, we have RIT Tech. So this is a registration that starts, it's a multi-level registration that starts at Sophia Level 2 and goes up to Sophia level four. And this is for practitioners who are sort of in hands-on roles who want to demonstrate their professionalism. The Fed IP is specific to the health and care profession. So this has been created. It's a collection of five different professional bodies who have got together to create these standards in health and care. And again, there are different levels um, of the Fed IP that take you up to Sophia level five. Um, then we have EngTech, which we're hoping to offer. So that is also, that's at level, Sphere level three. Um, and that is for people who may have technology roles that work, work in sort of technical settings, in engineering settings. So many of these people may choose the engineering council registrations rather than the BCS registration. So we have EngTech, then we have um, iEng, incorporated engineer, and chartered engineer that we, you can take through BCS. And then um, the BCS, um, has the Royal Charter also for the Chartered IT Professional, um, which effectively is uh, um, the route that we would love everybody to follow. And this um, demonstrates professional status for those engaged in complex um, 
roles with who have influence and responsibility. And so uh, through this blend of uh, registrations, some people just go straight in and take one, some people look at them as a career pathway. And so this enables professionals to demonstrate their competence at different stages of their career and in, in many different industry settings. We go to the next slide now, Olivia? Yeah. There you go. Thank you. So we're going to talk about CITP. This, um, our Royal Charter enables us to award Chartered IT Professional as a professional registration. Um, and it's an independent standard. And we talked about demonstrating competence, professionalism and commitment to the IT industry. And this looks at the breadth of somebody's knowledge, but also the depth. Um, and it, all it, it requires you to be an expert in your field and specialism. Um, it looks for integrity. Um, the evidence of integrity and also strong business acumen beyond IT, um, evidence that you're following a code of conduct and that you are committed to upholding best practice in the workplace, and also a commitment to the profession in general and ongoing development as yourself as a professional. And what this demonstrates is um, trusted competence. Um, and so what we say is that the um, chartered IT professionals must be employed using the skills defined by BCS in the scope of the IT profession. So that's a very broad field. You must be working in a complex um, role or roles that require underpinning knowledge and competence. And you must have this commitment to maintaining the CPD. So that's a quick snapshot of chartered IT professional, um, which is at um, Sophia level five. So if we go on to the next slide, we're going to talk, just look at the application journey for CITP. Yeah. Okay. That's it. So it is, it's quite a basic process. There's an application that um, is submitted and then we receive it online and we can track the application. Um, it will ask you for the validation through a supporter. So somebody else who can evidence your work, who knows you professionally, who can confirm that you're working at the level severe five. Um, and then there's an initial peer review. So we have a team of assessors who look at all the applications and they will have an initial um, discussion. Um, they might um, ask for a telephone conversation or they might ask for additional information from one of the supporters, um, depending on what they find. And then there's an interview and presentation. So this is a, a 10 minute presentation to two assessors and this will do, and the assessors will be selected based on the area of IT you're work, working in. For example, if you have a specialism around cyber, then we will make sure that the assessor has the relevant um, skills to assess that, that field. Um, and so what do the assessors look for? And there are four things, really. They look for evidence of autonomy so that you can work independently. Um, under broad direction and that you're responsible for meeting technical objectives of the project and also assigning um, tasks within the role. The second thing that they look for is influence. So this is about having influence with the organisation, but also with customers, maybe with suppliers, um, and also um, impacting decisions that are taken, whether it's on budget, whether it's on work deadlines, whether it's on technology, so the right level of influence. The third point is around complexity, so they will assess the complexity of your role. Um, so are you advising on standards, the methods, are you, um, available, are you able to assess risks, do you show creativity and innovation in your work practices, all of these things. And then the final point is around broader business skills. So this is about not just knowing the um, area of IT that you're working in, but also understanding the broader business dynamics beyond your role and how it impacts other, other teams and other departments. So this is the process that the assessors will go through. And when they award this, you will then get the certificates of current competency and, the, and be awarded the, the registration. So if you go on to the next um, slide, Olivia. Yeah. So um, SOFIA is the framework that all of the registrations are mapped against. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about what SOFIA Plus is. Um, SOFIA is, it is the most complex definition of IT skills for business. 
it's regularly updated by the Sophia Foundation um, so to ensure that it um, remains relevant. So at the moment we're on version 7, there is a version 8 coming out in the new year where they're going to be looking at which areas need to be upgraded. So for example, we would expect a lot more around data science and some of these emerging areas to be reflected in version 8, but at the moment we're on version 7. And it's made up of, the framework is made up of skills and tasks at all levels and it's very widely adopted it's used by individuals and also organizations to develop talent um, and it's adopted by around two, two and a half thousand organizations world, worldwide and it has this matrix of skills i think there are actually 103 skills now and seven different responsibility levels um, that you can map against so if we go on to the next slide um, bcs has developed um, sophia plus which is, um, it's, a, it's a sort of much deeper dive into the framework. Um, and so this enables you to get more out of the framework and it's aligned with our membership grades and also our certifications that we offer. And so, um, you know, it's, it's all based on Sophia, but it's much more granular. So there's this um, chart that you can, you, I'm not expecting you to read, that's on the slide that shows all of the different levels. Um, and what this does, it's, um, it helps you to assess where you are and where you want to go. So again, Olivia mentioned my BCS. So there's this functionality in my BCS called Browse Sophia Plus. And so what you do is you go into my BCS, you select the career development tab, and then you select my Browse Sophia Plus. It will ask you to identify your skill. For example, if you're a business analyst, you can look at the group of skills relating to business analyst. It asks you to assess what level you're operating at and between levels one to seven. And then you can browse all of the activities associated with that role at that level, the knowledge and also the skills that are required. And then as a final point, you can look at the training and development activities that you may need to undertake. For example, for a business analyst operating at Sophia level five, you might need to brush up on project leadership skills or presentation skills or quality management. So it will show you all of the skills that you will need. So if you're doing your own development plan, you can think, well, I should probably put some skills or some training around project leadership into my plan to make sure that I'm operating at the level and I can start to um, to build my career. It also shows you the qualifications that um, that it recommends. So, for example, it would recommend CITP at this level. That would be one of the things that would be shown or perhaps an international diploma in business analysis, which is a qualification that BCS offers. So if we go on to the next slide. Um, so this is just thinking a little bit more about the concepts of skills capability so we have the framework um, we work with many different organizations um, who who use this skills framework and really their objectives are twofold they they use the frameworks to ensure that they're working they and their teams are working to professional standards but also that they uh, are able to develop the capability that they need. It gives them a common language for describing and managing their skills and competence. And it also helps that within the organization, they've got consistency of skill levels and also of levels of responsibility. And it helps anybody who's in charge of um, managing staff or recruiting to um, do that more capably and to a more consistent level and also helps you to talk to recruiters um, using the same common language. So it's all around best practice and next practice. So if we if we move on to the next slide. There we go. So this very complicated diagram um, is an overview of what our Role Model Plus tool does. So Role Model Plus is BCS's own skills mapping platform. And so it's a product that we've uh, developed based on the Sophia framework. So it always uses the most current um, version. And what it does is it helps IT leaders or people in charge of learning and development or even HR teams to understand um, what digital competencies they need that exist in the organization currently and what they need. So there are three different phases. They can use the role model to build role profiles. So this is job descriptions. 
so they can build the profiles using the skills from the framework. They can then analyse the skills gaps in their own teams, so they can look at what they need, where the gaps are, um, and what, what should be on the list for, the, for development. And then finally, they can help to develop career pathways. So um, if they've got collective development plans for their team, that means that they can achieve sort of the digital transformation and the capabilities within the team that they need to fulfil that. Um, so the outcome is that the leaders have a much clearer vision for the structure that they need to achieve the strategy. The people in their teams will understand um, a lot better the role that they need to play in the bigger picture and also what their value is to the business and some progression routes um, because pe often people like to change from one role to the next or, or change careers. Um, and so it's really a, an effective tool to help organisations to manage and control um, you know their teams and create the right capabilities within their organizations but all of it is built on the Sophia plus which as an individual you can access through through the browse Sophia plus we go on to the next slide so the next slide just sort of brings everything together really um, so we have the uh, membership grades at the bottom um, that should, and we have the Sophia levels um, in the orange. We have the career progression levels and also the, the standards that we're offering. And at the top, the green boxes, I haven't talked about this, but BCS offers a range of um, qualifications called professional certifications at foundation, practitioner and higher level. And so these are across 13 different areas of IT. Um, and they are um, we don't offer those directly as BCS but you but we um, use channel partners such as Pearson View who you can go and take these courses through so if there's any interest I can perhaps afterwards um, talk about um, where those are available but really we think about professionalism as um, people's journeys through their career are different people's entry points are different and you know the level of qualifications that people want to take will differ depending on their roles so we have this whole professionalism map for bcs which shows the options available to you and if we just go on to uh, my final slide um, which really just um, talks about you know, I guess it opens, uh, it throws the question open to you. So have, hopefully you'll have a much better understanding um, based on what Olivia and I've said today about what's available through your membership and what um, professional registrations you can take through BCS. And this really is a message to say that it's a very personal thing. It depends on your current career stage, your ambitions and your goals as to what you're going to do with your membership and what is right for you. Um, and so I guess it's our job to make these things available and to communicate the options. Um, but really it takes um, you as members also to be proactive in recognising what will help you to achieve your career goals and using your membership to do just that. Um, so that's that's all I was going to share with you today. Um, so thank you for listening for now. I hope it's made sense, but I'm very happy to take any questions that, that you may have. And I think we have a few already. Thank you. Good stuff. Okay, great. So, um, yeah, there's a couple of questions here. Um, in response to um, the question at the beginning about anyone um, already with the CITP, there's a few people um, commenting saying that they're looking at the CITP uh, registration now. And so we've got one question, which is um, specifically about the application process. Um, and the question is that the individual would like to apply for CTP, CITP, but the application is quite difficult to fill in. So is there any way that they could get assistance or a sample um, application to help them with their own? Um, I, I think we can probably provide an example. One of the things that we've been talking about is doing some um, workshops to help for people who are looking at applying so that you could almost have an assessor um on and answer any questions so that if that's something of interest that we can maybe look at doing that the, the, we offer it at the moment through our corporate members to some of their teams but it is something that we could maybe do for individuals as well so we could almost have a live clinic environment i think that would be really valuable 
Um, but I will definitely go away and um, see if we can get an example. Um, Brilliant, that's great. If anyone else has any other questions, feel free to just pop them in the question um, tab on the right hand side. In the meantime, while we wait and see if there's any more questions coming through, Peter or Tom, do you have any um, questions or anything to add at all? Yeah, can you uh, hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I can see my my um, my my face is kind of fizzed. But uh, anyway, um, um, thank you for your presentation. I think that's very uh, informative. And um, uh, I'm thinking if um, any way for the adoption of um, say government or commercial organizations with um, the Sophia Press. Um, we've got, uh, there are, we know there are around two and a half thousand, so I think the Sophia Foundation would have yeah. all of that information because not all of them come through BCS necessarily. Um, we certainly have around 200 different clients in, um, in the UK mainly, who, um, including um, areas of our government who um, have adopted the Sophia framework. Um, and also the our Ministry of Defence is another very big employer um, who adopts the framework and also offers both the engineer, the chartered engineer and chartered IT professional standards um, when working with us. So um, we'd like a lot more people to, to offer the standards, but I think at the moment we're seeing that in the current climate, um, a lot of people are looking to build up their credentials and a lot of um, employers are, um, looking for evidence that will distinguish one applicant from another. So I think the role of professional um, registrations is becoming more and more important. Um, and I think also in terms of organisations, if they have a, a professional who has a chartered status, you know, they can have greater confidence that they will be mitigating risks that they might have to the business um, because the standards of professionalism will be higher and more consistent if they're done to a framework. I see. Thank you. I, I got a question actually. So um, uh, I, one of the slides that you have mentioned is uh, the Eng Tech from the Engineering Council. So yes. uh, I, I remember there is something called the URAN, which is European Engineer from the Engineering Council before. So what is the difference between the two? And uh, is there any uh, difference in the qualification standing before and after Brexit? Um, I have to be honest, I don't know the difference between, I'll have to go away and find out because I'm not familiar with the previous um, registration. What is the, the name of it? Urenge, did you say? Sorry? What was the name of the other registration? Urenge. Uh, 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 Uring, which is a E-U-R-I-N-G. Okay. It was Uring. quite old actually. Uh, I remember the, that name around 10 years ago actually and i believe it is some, some something like a, a qualification that we can have across the entire european union and uh right. which, which is one of the um you know uh, accreditation body one of the accreditation bodies bcs okay um i'm i'm not familiar with that so i will have to go away and find out and come back to you on that point sure. there, there's association between that between yes. the bcs yes. yeah so basically mm -hmm. we are reciprocal for that yes So maybe um, there was the advantage, you know, um, you know, having the uh, CITP or or the the retail, you know, I mean, how common, you know, in the UK environment, I mean, in the industry. It's um, it, there are lots of different routes into the profession, and um, I'd say. Chartered IT professional is recognised. It's been recognised by more recruiters now. Certainly in the public sector, it's it's recognised um, a lot. And in um, we have um, in the sort of consulting companies like Deloitte and PwC, you would expect a, a quite strong professional community within those types of organisation. Um, and in sort of engineering as well. So we it, it's it's um, 
it has a presence in many different sectors. I'd say the sort of professional services, public sector are the largest at the moment, and the defence industry. Um, but we've got a big program happening at BCS to grow the profile of this and the credibility. So hopefully, if I come back and talk to you next year, the number will be a lot bigger. I see. Let's see if there we have any more questions. There's no more questions from the audience actually now. Yeah. Oh. Well, a couple here. Um, oh, are there so. any reciprocal recognition agreements with Hong Kong's professional body? Okay, this one I I I should be answering actually. So uh, uh as far as I remember, uh, uh, Tom, you can you can remind me if I have missed out anything. Uh, there's a okay. reciprocal membership. There's a reciprocal membership between BCS and uh, Hong Kong Computer Society, and uh, actually uh, we we recognize the uh, membership with one another, and there is a 20% membership fee waiver if uh, you are being the member of both. Actually, so if you're being the member of BCS, you can enjoy a 20% discount of membership fee from Hong Kong CS, and uh, vice versa. Actually, so you can you can become a Hong Kong CS member or you are existing Hong Kong CS member. If you join BCS, you will uh, enjoy 20% off uh, from the membership fee. That's great. Thanks, Peter. And one more question from the audience, which is what's the appeal procedure for an unsuccessful CNG registration? Um, the applications stated not uh, recommended because of lack of innovation. So the individual would like to um, appeal, maybe provide some more details or something like this. Um, do we know what's the procedure to do that? I think the procedure is to um, go back to um, whether well we could go into we could do it through customer services. Um, we could start yeah. the appeal that way. Um, you know if that's the route in for absolutely everything. Or if the um, if the award has come from some if the correspondence has come from a specific um, team to go back to the team on that. But definitely I would recommend going back through customer services and saying that there is an appeal and we can look at it. That's great, thanks. So are there any support uh, for uh, young members? Say they um, they only be, be, um, be in the industry for up to three years? Yeah, so that's... Um... That's something that we're working on quite a lot at the moment, actually. So we've got a couple of ways um, that we're going about doing it. And one of the, the key ways is through our new um, young, uh, it used to be the um, young professionals group. And we've decided that we would like to take that um, initiative to the next level, basically. And so now we've got an early careers executive. We felt with the um, young professionals group that it was focused really around um, age, like the word young, it makes you think, um, um, young age but actually I think the industry is changing a lot now and people are starting their careers in IT later on in life so um, you might be changing your career um, you know 30 40 year, years old 50 years old even coming into the IT industry so it's not really necessarily just young people anymore it's anyone who's early on in their IT career and so we're just setting up the executive now and it will be a, a sort of committee that looks across apprenticeships, degrees, career changes. Um, we've got many sort of, you know, different ways that you can get into the IT profession. So we want to encompass all of those and not just the, the young people who've come from university, perhaps down the traditional route. So that group will be working with BCS centrally. They will also be working um, with our committees and our volunteers and sections and branches and everything to kind of pull together lots of different views about um, what it's like to be early in your career, early in the IT industry, and then figure out some ways that BCS could put in some better support basically for those people. But in addition, we are doing um, something right now for, um, for graduates. So we've got a special program at the moment for first year of membership, um, a discount of 
uh, it will be just costing £25. So it's called the Class of 2020, that initiative, and um, that's for anyone graduating this year. Obviously, um, things are very different this year for graduates than previously. And so we want to just help with uh, a bit of a, a fit on to the IT industry with the £25 membership. All the benefits and everything will be the same. And some individuals will be ready for MBCS already. Perhaps they've taken a, um, a degree with our accreditation, in which case MBCS professional status will be for them, but otherwise uh, anyone for AMBCS as well. And that's, yeah, really just to help um, the people who are uh, graduating in this difficult time and we can support them and get through. Anyone who's interested in taking on uh, that Class of 2020 membership, if you just search BCS Class of 2020, you should find the, the page online, everything you need to know is there. Okay, thank you. Uh, sounds like um, lots of things are happening. And um, uh, what about uh, online courses or anything that help on their their job, like um, um, common like security or or uh, IT services that is um, introduced by by BCS? Any uh, professional? Uh, yeah. So we have the um, we have the professional certifications um, that are available through the different training providers. So those all break down into different areas. Um, we've we've had an awful lot of um, webinar content over the pandemic though um, from the different specialist groups. So there are a lot there's a lot of really really good content that's free with uh, that's completely free that you can look at um, by going through the webinars that we've had on different topics. So I, I would advise that. Um, and then one of the things that we are looking at doing is creating some modules. Um, so that I'm hoping to have the first one by um, the end of November. And so this will be around ethics in AI. So we're hoping to get a small collection of modules that would be included within the membership. So I'm working with a product team on that at the moment, but it's not not there yet, but something that I think will be really brilliant to add into membership if we can. Oh, there's a question here about when BCS will resume on-premises events or face-to-face -face events, basically. Um, we have, um, you know, we're looking at the government guidelines. I mean, at the moment, you know, it, it, it depends region by region. For example, I know that there is an award ceremony that's happening, a face-to-face -face award ceremony that's happening in Sri Lanka. So, you know, each territory needs to look at the government guidelines to see what is appropriate. Um, so in the UK, our London office remains closed. Um, our office, our head office, um, is available to some staff but we're not having events yet so the guidelines that we've said is that we doubt that there will be any physical events until 2021 january 2021 at least um so we're assuming that everything will be virtual between now and the end of the calendar year in the uk but as i say if there are sort of local guidelines um from different regions you would need to stick to those and take the advice of that as as for home section, actually we are following closely to the announcement from the government and see how stringent the restriction will be. And uh, as long as the government is lifting up some of the uh, um, um, you know the the restrictions of, about gathering, uh, we'll try to have some physical events uh, uh, starting from small scale. But uh, regarding the time frame, we're just following the government guidelines. Mm -hmm. I think what's been really interesting through this period is that we had some regional branches in the UK or some specialist groups uh, who were not as good at delivering events virtually and so this has been a very um, sharp learning curve and people have really embraced the change and so I think that all of the um, branches and groups will now, they will never go back to how it was before. There will always be a blended format, so there will be some physical events, but there will always be a good program of um, virtual events also. Can I ask just a, um, a question about uh, BCS Women? How's the development uh, on this? Is there more more IT professional? Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, so we've um, really seen um, the, the, we've looked at some some statistics that have come from the Office of National Statistics, um, looking at the proportion of women in IT, and it has actually increased by about three percent. So it's still not where we would like it to be. It's the twenty percent of the overall profession, but that's gone up from seventeen um, percent in a year. So that's really positive. And we think this is partly to do with, you know, better levels of more, more, more female apprenticeship starts and also more people coming into the accredited degree courses. So it's going very much in the right direction, but obviously still lower than we would like it to be. There's no more um, no more questions from the audience yet. Yeah, can I just ask one? Tom, you need to say say that again. Uh, your 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 mic is muted. Um, the the society award. I heard there's a society award uh, happening. Can you share some information about that? Is it for individual or what? 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 What's about that? The, the society of, I think the society medal, perhaps Holly. A oh, medal. The society yes. medal. <laughs> Yes. Um, yes, this is new. So um, we recognise that in our awards framework, we had we have the honorary fellow, we have the distinguished fellow, and those are those have been available for some time. And the difference between those, so those recognise people who have made incredible progress either in the technology or who have um, done a lot to make IT good society and work with the BCS. But we felt that there was a gap really for. Um, you know, sort of more public recognised figures who have a real link to technology, who are maybe inspiring younger people who are coming through um, the profession. So it's almost a much broader um, opportunity to recognise somebody who may be in the public eye, who is incredibly influential. Um, and so the applications for this award are open until um, I think mid-October. So there's a, still a couple of weeks if you can think of anybody who would fit the criteria for the Society Medal. Um, okay. you know, nationally or locally, it doesn't matter. So have a go if you can think of anyone suitable. Okay. Um, anything from Peter? No, that's okay. That's okay. Just want to say thank you to both of you, uh, Olivia and uh, Holly, for helping the Hong Kong section in delivering a very successful webinar tonight. That's our pleasure. Thank you very much for yes. having us. Thank yeah. you very much. I mean, uh, let me walk up. Yeah, thanks, thanks for the team, also the web team yeah, in UK, and also the Hong Kong team here, uh, the, the office bearer, and also a member uh, um, for, the, for the poster design, Edward. And um, I think this is a, a very special tonight and uh, for the webinar and uh, i mean for the t uh, pandemic we actually um actually making the hong kong session I mean, uh, and the and the uk uh, headquarters getting closer i mean uh, i hope we can have more collaboration uh, collaboration in the future and uh, we enjoy uh, talking to you more okay Definitely. Thank you so much. Thank I think you. So my, much. I might have some problem, but anyway. Yeah. Thank you for tonight. Yeah, for for audience, any any further question, welcome. Uh, leave us a uh, um, uh, a message or email us, so we will get back to you. Yeah, later. Okay. Thank you tonight. Thank you, Thank you very you. much. Good night. Bye. 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 -bye.